how do we take this into Painter um, and retain all the details and everything that we're going to make? Now, I'm going to say uh, a couple of things that the, the process of exporting something that is really high res like this guy might be a little bit slow. So I've, I've already done it. Uh, I'll show you how to do it, but I already have it so that I don't have to wait until it's finished. Uh, so, but just uh, be aware that it might take a, a while to, to export a high res mesh. If you have something that is really, really high res and you're trying to export it and it just crashes, or maybe you, you try to load them into Painter and it's like way too heavy, uh, it depends on your computer, right? So I cannot give you a specific um, you know, scenario. What you can do at this point is duplicate this with all the sub to uh, sorry with all the subdivision levels. Um, go to the highest subdivision level. So what I have here, delete lower. So that's gonna get rid of any subdivision level, and then you can run what we did for the initial step of the work for, uh, the workshop, which is the decimation master. So you can pre-process that and then decimate it. So that uh, series is gonna optimize that you know 17 million polygons into potentially. Uh, 4 million or 5 million. And because it's using the decimation, it's still going to try to keep all the details. So you're going to have a high res mesh that is more optimized. This is just a, a, an extra tip of the workflow in case um, you experience any issues at the export that I'm going to show you or when you import that I'm going to show you as well. That, um, yeah, you know, that after, after you import the things, you might have like some issues. So um, we'll do that. Uh, let's go ahead and click on. Uh, all low, and that would make sure that everything that we have is in the lowest subdivision level. Let's collapse this. So just this. Um, let's put this one here as well. Okay, so we have a base mesh for the entire body and the head or bust. I have the teeth, which I'm gonna keep as a separate sub tool. I mean, you can combine it, but I'm gonna keep it separately. Um, and the eyes. Okay, so we have three, only three pieces, right? Obviously the head with the body is the one that has the most uh, details. Now for Painter, we need two, uh, ideally, and this is one of the workflows, but again, we're gonna keep it simple. Um, ideally, we wanna have two meshes, one that has all the information in terms of the details and another one that is optimized. But because we run into, uh, we run the serial measure process and we clean up the, the base mesh and all of that, we already have both of those things within the same model. Um, so in other words, we have the low res mesh, the clean optimized mesh that we can put into a render or whatever. And then we have the high res mesh that that's where we have all the details and everything. Um, so this is going to be our reference file to create those details in the low res mesh. So um, hopefully I'm not confusing you. All you need to remember at this point is that you need a low resolution mesh and a high resolution mesh for Painter so that you can recreate those details in there. But because we have subdivision level, we have that in the same model. We have low res and high res in the subdivision level. That's it. Um, so the idea is to export the low res mesh into Painter so that we can work faster. And then also export the high res mesh so that we can recreate those details in Painter in as a, as a normal map and all of that. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and change. I'll show you. This is my low res mesh, which is totally fine. But just so that I can get more details, and again, I'm not worried about, okay, this is gonna be a, a game a character or I need to optimize it more. No, the only thing that, I'm, that I care about is, uh, or at the moment is to create a nice concept to, uh, to showcase my idea, to communicate what this concept is all about. So I wanna just go to one level up to the second subdivision level. And, and that gives me a little bit more um, detail. So this is, this is the low res, right? It could be, even lower or higher, but I think this is a good compromise. Um, just because it is still low, but it has a, a bit more detail. And I'll, I'll wanna give you an example exactly of what I mean. If I go to the lowest subdivision level, um, look at how the, the teeth here sort of join the mouth, right? Um, there's not much information because again, the teeth is something that I, that I did after. So the details or the, like the ridges around the, the let's say the gums or the teeth um, weren't considered in the series measure. So that's, that's the only reason why I want to add one more subdivision level for my low risk so that I can have a bit more volume in the base mesh. You don't have to do it. You can just go with the lowest resolution that you have. Uh, this is just a personal preference for this project um, because what I just show you basically. So this is gonna be my low res. Uh, the teeth uh, have no subdivision level. Um, I haven't sculpted, maybe I should have done that, but I'm just gonna divide it a couple of times just to show you that the process is the same. So you can just spend some time adding some details um, in here, or you can do it in Painter. Uh, 
I just subdivide it three times so that I have a high res and a lower res. Uh, if you don't have subdivisions, that doesn't matter. You can just keep it as a single one. Uh, for the eyes, I'm going to do the same thing because right now it's pretty low res. So subdivide just so that I can have a nice reflection in there. Uh, so now we have you know, lots of polygons, but everything has subdivision level. So everything has the highest subdivision level. So for the eyes, I'm going to go to level one and to the teeth as well, level one. Like I said, for the body, you could also use level one, but in my case, I'm going to use level two. That's it. This is my low risk. So the important part now is that you need to name the, the pieces of your mesh correctly so that when you bring them into Painter, uh, Painter knows how to, uh, how to read them. Now, there's, there's a simple way. You can just export this as it is, and Painter will do a pretty good job at recreating everything. It's just that um, when you have two intersecting meshes, you might have a little bit of an artifact between the meshes. So in my case, I don't have that issue, uh, except in this area or the eyes, um, where, you, where, I you, where I have the teeth. So when I project all the details, there might be like a little artifact or something that doesn't look quite right in terms of the ambient occlusion or normal in between the, the teeth and the mouth because they're separate objects and Painter is trying to project the details from both. So this is the reason why in this workflow uh, it's good to name things. So again, I, I know that I tend to talk a lot, so just wanna make sure that the, the steps are simple. Um, you have your low res mesh, now we're going to go ahead. Uh, so this is step one, make sure that you have your low res mesh in the subdivisions. The next step is to um, name things correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this head or bust maybe, because I had the head and bust. Click here and call this teeth and eyes. If you have other objects, you go ahead and do the same thing. Like maybe you add horns as a separate subtool. You add something else like a, a tongue or something. Just name them correctly. That's it. Then I'm going to click on this one. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the C plugin. This is, let's put it here on the left hand side. This is a pretty practical, you can do this manually what I'm going to do, but this is a very practical tip that you can use as well. So the tip is how can you rename or batch rename a multiple set of tools or a, or a, how did, how can you batch rename uh, a bunch of subtools in one go right and the simplest way of doing it is to go to the subtool master hang on let me just do one one thing where are we subtool master here so this one comes with zbrush it has been in zbrush for the longest time um you can go ahead and click on rename and you can add or remove suffix. So I'm gonna add a suffix when I click okay. And I'm gonna do underscore low, right? You can, you can write anything that you want. You can do underscore chicken, whatever you want. But as a um, industry sort of standard, this is kind of like the easiest way of doing it. You can change all of that after, but you know, just, you know, just, just wanna let you know, you can name it anything you want. So underscore low, and you see now we have bust low, teeth, blah, blah, blah. So now I'm going to go to the, uh, another C plugin pilot, uh, sorry, another C plugin within, within the C plugin pilot called the FBX export. I want to make sure that visible is enabled so that everything that I have visible is exported. Um, make sure that you have that. Otherwise, if you click on select, it's only going to export the one that you have selected. So visible is the one that I go for. Um, if you don't have a bunch of like random pieces like I do, you can click on all and it's going to export everything, even though it's not visible. So in my case, visible is what I want. Three visible subtools. And I'm going to click export. Again, I'm not going to do it because I already done it. So I have the low res mesh. Um, but you can click on export and then you have it. Now, the next step is the one that is going to take a little bit longer, uh, which is exporting the high res. Uh, so let's click on all high. I mean, it's going to take a bit longer for the computer to process it, but it's the same quick steps. So I'm going to remove the, the underscore low. So let's go back to rename. So we need to remove the suffix. So Sirius is going to look for underscore low and remove that, right? Let's click on rename again and add suffix. And this time it's going to be underscore high. And now we have the high res mesh, right? So again, same thing. You just go ahead and click on export and export the high res mesh. Now, uh, a couple of tips. Well, one tip really when you export a high-res mesh as an FBX from ZBrush, uh, try not to click anywhere on the screen while the, when, while the process is happening and try not to switch to a different um, window. Because if you say, okay, I'm gonna export this, uh, click here, and then I'm gonna switch to another window, you know, Alt-Tab or whatever, and do something in the, in the meantime, um, you, 
you might have stopped the process or paused the process. So when you go and check back in ZBrush and see how things are going, um, ZBrush hasn't even started unless you are, your mouse is on ZBrush to, to start the process. So um, when you're going to export your high-res mesh, like I said, it's going to take a few minutes uh, depending on how, much, how many polygons you have. So make sure you click on export, but you don't touch anything and, and just let ZBrush uh, sit there without changing um, applications or anything. That's something that I found to be really useful. Okay, uh, this is kind of like what I was saying at the beginning that um, these are the, all the different potential scenarios that I cover in the course, like how to do it from ZBrush, how to do it after in Painter, all of those things. What I'm giving you is the simplest thing um, without you know thinking about, oh, I need to have UVs and all of that. We're just gonna finish our sculpt and export it in high res and low res. That's the simplest approach. Uh, but yeah, you can do it. I, I do. I do it in depending on the case. Again, in both. Um, yeah, both ways. I guess that's the answer. Um, cool. So we have exported the low res mesh and the and the high res mesh. That's all. So at this point, I'm gonna click on all low, and I'm gonna bring in my painter. So we're gonna jump into painter now. All right, so now we are in Painter. Uh, this is my custom UI in Painter. It's what I prefer to use. Um, I know it looks like the uh, kind of like the um, the canvas or the viewport is a little bit smaller, uh, but it's because I, I just usually use this. So I have all my stuff, and then when I'm actually sitting down and sculpt or not sculpting, but painting, like I would do in ZBrush, I'll just press Tab, and then I have the entire area myself uh, but if you want to have like something similar or if you don't have the same ui uh, you can just click on the panels and move them around um, i'll show you why i have it this way in a second but let's go ahead and as a next step just to set things up we're gonna bring in the low res mesh so the one with the lowest subdivision i'm gonna just click and drag the fbx in here and here is where the magic of this workflow the simplicity of this workflow happens all i'm going to do i'm not gonna change anything. These are all default settings, except this one. So by default, I think it's going to be off, but this is all default. I'm just going to click on auto unwrap and click OK. That's it. Nothing else. So what we're doing really is just letting uh, 3D Painter analyze the low res mesh of our model, and I'm going to allow it to, to cut it into pieces to create the UVs. So you can do that in ZBrush if you're familiar with the C, um, this the UV master, right? I have a few uh, tutorials and a PDF about it. If you want to just go ahead and do it in ZBrush, and when you export the low res mesh, you have the UVs from ZBrush. You don't have to have UVs in the low res mesh and the high res mesh. Uh, maybe that's one of the questions that uh, were asked before. Um, you can have the low res mesh with UVs from ZBrush, um, and then you, you, you decimate the high res mesh and export it. Doesn't have to have UVs. And that's it. All right, so it took a less than a minute, and now we have our chicken head creature um, in Painter, and it has UVs. It's not the like it's not going to be the the nicest set of UVs. Let me just show you. If I click on this one, 3D and 2D view, I'm going to press Tab. So this is my chicken head. Um, by the way, Shift and right click changes the lighting uh, or rotates the the environment. So I have my chicken, and here is the UV. Okay, so it's not bad. Maybe the UV master would do a better job. I don't know. This is, I don't care <laughs> because the tools that I'm going to give you is so that precisely you can work this way and you don't have to uh, be worried about uh, UVs. And if you're not into this type of uh, workflows or um, if, you don't, if you haven't dealt with UVs, um, basically I want to give you the tools so that these technicalities uh, won't prevent you from creating artwork. So it's just, you can do it without UVs. Um, so let's get out of this one, back to 3D only. Just wanted to show you, we have, oh, sorry. We have um, UVs now, um, and that's it. So we can potentially start like painting and dragging materials. So I can take this, you know, Apple skin. It's just one of the materials that I downloaded from, um, from the Substance library, uh, and it works. Like, it's all good. Uh, but you see, it has a very clear differences between one portion of one uh, UV island or shell or section between the two. Um, that is kind of like the, one of the caveats of this workflow that we generated a random UVs that make it work in Painter and we can paint and stuff, but um, it's gonna have those, those lines. So the simplest way of fixing this is just to change the way that um, uh, Painter reads the, the projection of the texture. So right now, uh, if I look into the 3D and 2D, 
um, let's go here. You see that um, the texture, um, actually, I don't know if I have, um, ah, ah, we, we'll use this one. Basically, it's the same thing as projecting it from the camera. So you have everything la laid down in 2D and we're projecting that texture in there. So it doesn't matter. Um, it's just going to be uh, uh, like, like a 2D projection or into the 2D uh, UV map, but it's going to have those things. So the way that we can fix this easily is just to change the way that the texture is projected. So this is the reason um, why I have this UI. Because on the right-hand side, I have all my layers. So I just have the layers here. Um, in this tab, I have the texture list. So I can switch between the creature, uh, the eyes, you know, the three sub-tools basically that we have. Those are going to be the three texture sets. Uh, um, that's the equivalent to the sub-tools in, in ZBrush. Uh, so I have my layers here. And then on the left-hand side, I have the properties of that layer that I just put in. I have the texture set. We're going to come back to this in a second. And I have the shader set settings, right? So I have like kind of like properties of whatever I'm using in the layers. But it's, uh, uh, it's just my preference. It, there's no, it, it's, it doesn't affect the workflow that I'm showing you. Uh, and then on the left-hand side, I have all my libraries, so I can just look for all the stuff. All right, so we're going to change how this is projected. So I'm going to click on UV projection here, and I'm going to change it to Tri-Planner. So Tri-Planner is basically a box that projects the same texture from all the different angles or as, as a box. You can do it as a box. You can do it as a um, you know, spherical projection. You know, sometimes uh, for rounded shapes, it might be better. Um, I just like Triplanner because it covers all the bases. Now, the Triplanner is going to project, like I said, from every single angle, um, but we're not going to have any cuts, any visible cuts, because it's going to blend the edges. Now, you can change the hardness of how it's blend. So let's see here. So you see this area right here, um, around there. If I change the harness, you see how it's just changing that sort of blend. So if I increase the harness, it's going to be like very sharp stuff. So I'm going to make sure that I reduce that harness uh, just to keep things very, very clean. That's it. Okay. Um, that is in terms of like the, like how painter works and part of the workflow that I'm going to show you. Um, now let's get into the proper stuff. 